welcome to our 2018 Kingdom Now Gathering. On behalf of our bishop and pastor, Rodney and Michelle Roberts, we would like to thank you for worshiping with us. Tonight's message will be available directly after service at the media table on CD, DVD, or MP3. So stop over at the media table directly after service to obtain your messages on the go. Also, if you plan on attending our Sabbath service tomorrow, please text Kingdom Now to 55469 so that we can get an accurate count for lunch. Lunch will be free, however, we do need you to text Kingdom Now to 55469. Now stand to your feet as Bishop Roberts introduces our guest speaker of the hour. or three verses and these three verses will sum up what we talked about last night that's how profound they are I'd like us tonight to look quickly in something that's uh, a blessing in Ephesians chapter number one and I'd like to look at uh, verse 17 Ephesians 1 17 it's good to see some of y'all that I haven't seen in a while and of course you I I don't know where the other folk was. Some more folk in here. Maybe they come in and late. Did I run them away last night? I don't know that word was. That word was you here. Anybody here last night? Oh my God! I'm, I'm, I'm glad. Amen. Jabari, they sent me to MP3. I got saved again last night. Hallelujah! I could not hardly sleep. I, I appreciate him for that. Let me give honor to Bishop Roberts, Pastor Michelle, and come on, Pastor. Rashid and Benita, come on and. All of you ministers, the saints and friends, the musicians, y'all was on fire, boy. Wow. I, all the back of this is just burn up, you know? <laughs> I appreciate y'all, man. All right, let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. Let's dig deeper. Of course, we, we, our theme this week, we've been talking about kingdom authority and power. Kingdom authority and power. We talked about the difference, defining the two, that they are not one and the same. They run together, but they are distinctive. And it's significant that you learn this. And so let's sum, up, let's sum up last night and go deeper. Somebody say deeper. So in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17, it says uh, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that's Elohim of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, he may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Let's keep going. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance. The exceeding greatness of his power, say power. Okay. To usward who believe according to the workings of his mighty power. Give me verse 20. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. And I think there's a couple more verses. Let's go on down. Far above principalities and there's that word again. And power. power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come now let's go on two more verses watch and have put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church two more verses i'll get right out of your way which in his body which is his body the fullness of him that filleth all 
in all. I'd like to go to Ephesians, what we looked at last night, 2, 6, and then we're going to backtrack. And I'm going to sum this up in verse 19 and verse 21 is going to sum up what we talked about so we can go deeper. Read this again. We read it last night, but help those that are here for the first time, those listening by MP3, lift up your voice with power and authority. Now say this, and hath raised us up together. Now we talk Jesus is high and lifted, he's up. All right, but it says now, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So where he is, there we will be also. There we will be also. Now, watch this. Let me let me let me, let me pull this right where I want to get to tonight. Go back to verse 19. We told you that the New Testament was translated from Greek into English, into English. And at the time of translation, there was at least twice as many Greek words as English words. So what you're going to see in scripture is the same English word used, but it's actually a different Greek word. So it takes on another meaning. They didn't have enough English words to, 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 to play out, to translate it directly. So I'll show you, and you can cross-examine this in your own study, and I'll help you tonight. Let's sum up last night. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? The English word power there, if you look it up in the concordance, it is 1411, which is the word dunamis. We explored that last night when Acts chapter 1 verse 8 declares that after that, that the Holy Ghost has come upon you up on you shall be endued with power which is dynamite or explosive power. That dunamis is the power of the gospel to salvation. It was an explosive occurrence that happened into your life. To, re, to be regimed. To a, hey, hey, waking up your dead spirit, which was alive to sin and dead to your dominion and dead to your pre, his pre-knowledge of us. We must be born again. Explosion. If y'all say something, it'll help, it'll help me. Just nod a blink, a wink, or throw something. Just nothing sharp. You understand? But you know what I mean? And so he says now, he says, he, so he, he says, here's this, this dominant or not dominant, but more so this dunamis. Say dunamis. We told you a police officer has a badge. That's exousia. 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 E-X-O-U-S-I-A. E-X-O-U-S-I-A. This is dunamis, the gun on a police officer. The exousia is the badge. So we'll see it. Now watch this. Verse 19, the dunamis, miraculous power. To us who believe according to the workings of his mighty power. So we keep hearing this word power, but something happens here because this is 2904. And this word in the Hebrew, the original writ is not power, it's kratos. K-R-A-T-O-S. We heard of exousia, we've heard of dunamis, but not many people are familiar with kratos. So kratos is dominion or ruling power. Right, And so now we see that he says with his exceeding greatness of his explosive, his explosive miraculous power to those who believe according to the workings of his mighty Kratos or his, his place of authority. Right? Now go to verse 21. Man, y'all got the heat on? Wow. Hallelujah. I'm burning up from the inside out. Like a mic. I got fire in my bones and fire on my head. Amen. Got the heat on. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, hot fire. Yeah, look at verse 21. Far above principalities and what family? Come on, and what? I'm spending too much time so y'all ain't pushing me. And principalities and power. Here's the English word power again, but it's a different Greek word. It's the exousia we talked about earlier, 1849, which means authority or influence. So what happens is this. What he's saying in these two verses, Ephesians is powerful. It's powerful. It's powerful. This is why Timothy was nervous and Paul had to tell Timothy, he said, listen, don't, he said, don't drink, don't, he said, you got, you got this situation in your belly. He said, drink a little wine for your stomach infirmities. 
to help settle you. Why? He was 19 years old and Paul sent him to Ephesus to pastor. And the problem is Timothy is somewhat overwhelmed because Ephesus was a church baptized in revelation. They just didn't have the logos or the logistics or, or the logic of scripture. They had, they had the revelation and he starts talking about you were, you were chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy before him, to walk in love. That's hard to grasp. And he worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. He starts to establish sovereignty. So Timothy is saying, these folks are seasoned and I'm just a young man. Paul said, let no man despise. Let me hurry. Don't, don't despise your youth. Don't worry about it. The Holy Ghost is going to help you. And so he starts off deep in revelation. And what he's saying to us here, let me hurry up. When we speak of, of the power of Yah, it manifests towards believers in the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's Romans 1.16 that says that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God under salvation. The explosive power to change you from who you were to who he meant for you to be explosion y'all not talking back somebody say an explosion happened in me when i got saved it wasn't just easy oh, man. what i mean by that is it wasn't something that i you know it just it just kind of eased up on me over time when he came in he told what was in me to get up out and when he came in, it was, it was tremendous. My mind and everything was what just happened to me. That's why I don't understand folk who have to have folk cosign their salvation. I don't understand people that have to say, yeah, they saved. And parents say, yeah, he saved and she saved. Nobody can say that you're saved. You know, it's like somebody telling a woman who knows she's pregnant that, you know, she got you second quest questioning, you're second guessing your pregnancy. When, when you, when you have a child in you ladies and you know you're pregnant, how I many know you know you're pregnant? Amen. Amen. But, but something, something, the Holy Ghost came in me and I, I knew there was a change that happened. And so that's the dunamis. Let's go now. So now he says, he says, the dunamis power, it doesn't just stop with salvation, right? What happens is we understand John 8, 31, the truth shall make you free. Acts 10 and 38 says how Yah anointed Jesus who went about doing good and healing those that were sick and oppressed of the devil because God was with him. That dunamis power that, that delivers and sets free. And so we, we also see this dunamis in Mark 16, 15 through 18 about these signs will follow them that believe. In my name, they'll cast out devils. If you drink any deadly thing, it won't hurt you. But then also in verse 19, we see this Kratos power and it's described as mighty power. Kratos. It's me. It means dominion or ruling power. We see first that dominion was given to Adam or man of the clay, man of the dirt. Y'all waving us up. Come on now. Man of the dirt in Genesis 1 26 that in the garden, he was given dominion. We'll make man like us. He'll have dominance. We also see there that that dominance, watch this, was lawfully and legally lost or forfeited or given over to the serpent, who serpent means, uh, 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 it means a shining, shining one. Look it up. You can go over it real quick. Serpent means shining one. So you got to remember, it wasn't a slithering snake in the beginning. It was an angelic being. His name was Lucifer, and he walked uprightly and took on this subtle, this form, the, the most subtle of all beasts which the Lord thy God made. Talk back to me. It helps me preach. So what he is, what did I say serpent is now? Shining one. So that's why Jesus said, when, when, when this thing went down with Satan or Lucifer wanting to be asked the most high, we looked at it last night. Jesus said, I beheld Satan like lightning. <laughs> when he was slapped, sparks shot out of there. We think of lightning, we think of, 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 of quick, like a flash of light. He was excommunicated from a place of authority down to earth where he lost authority, but he still has power. So the scripture said, y'all start, I'm starting to feel it now. Y'all look like y'all pushing me now. Yeah. yeah. And so the dominion was lost legally. I'm going to say it like this. I hope you don't get mad at me, but Eve lost the poker game. 
that she wasn't aware of uh, the bid or, or how devastating the losses would be. But it wasn't just on Eve, Adam. The Most High never came until Adam. Who told you you were naked? Let me hear. Who told you? Why are you hiding? Why are you running from me? So like lightning, it, out of here, light, gone. And so what Paul picks up is in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, he refers to as Satan as the God of this world. The God of this world who's lost authority, but he uses power. And we said last night that what authority is, is lawful kingdom acknowledgement, the authenticity and the acknowledgement of heaven for you to operate lawfully in the earth with power. What is power? It tries to ease up next to authority and wield it. So in other words, authority is King Ahab and power is Jezebel. So people who rule behind the scenes are not recognized in heaven. Remember Matthew 7? Did not we do miracles and we forged your name? Didn't we have all this power? And then when they finished talking about what they were able to achieve with power, Jesus said, I'm going to say unto them, y'all know that, right? We don't need to go there. Y'all scholars, right? Yeah, yeah. He says, he says, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I know you not. Which is the word Adam knew Eve. Knew mean to be intimate. Intimate to intimate. To come into to a relationship through the exchange. We become one. We consummated the marriage. Okay. Let's go deeper now. All right. So now. So we find he's the God of this world. He rules by power. Not authority. So now what happens is in, in Romans 5, 17, we've seen it last night, hurry preacher, is that we've seen in Romans 5, 17 that we reign in life by Christ Jesus. And here's a, here's an amazing thing is to reign means to be a king or to have rule. And so what Adam lawfully lost or forfeited through the trickery of Satan, Jesus came to give it back to us. To bring us to a place of pre-fall in Eden, which really is a place they can't find Eden. Because Eden is not a location. Eden is a porthole in the earth that heaven is open under. They can't find Eden geographically. Because it's a place of dominion where somebody lines up in the earth under that opening. That's why Jesus, his disciples never asked him for anything in the three years that they walked with him. The sons of Zebedee, their mother came and said, well, master, when you come into your kingdom, grant my boys one to sit at your right and your left. He said, ain't mine to give. He said, but you know what? Here's what I want to show you. They never asked him anything except one thing because they began to observe his life. He would go away into a mountain to pray. When he would come back, they would be shaking at night because of a storm and and he would come walking on water. And what was causing them to have great fear with authority, he spoke to the winds and said, peace be still. And they marveled and said, what manner of man is this that even the elements obey him? Then they would watch him go away and pray and come, y'all talking to me. He would come back and demons in men, men would run and, and demons would speak through men. He'd come back from praying and blind men would say, have mercy upon me. And they started to say, wait a minute. Every time he leaves us and goes and gets in isolation, when he returns, power. So what they asked him is, they said, Master, Master, the only thing, research the scripture, they said, Master, teach us to pray. And he said, when you pray, pray our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom. Thy will be done on earth as it is. Y'all ain't saying. So, so what? See, what prayer does is it, is it gives you an understanding that I am a light being captured in a body terrestrial. I'm in an earth suit, but I'm a light vessel. I'm a light being. So I, what I am is a spirit. I possess a soul, but I'm in a concoction that is temporary called my body. But what he said is, he says, what prayer really is.
is in essence isn't asking for things. Prayer is lining up your mind with what he had in mind prior to your fall. Now y'all ain't talking to me. He lines us up. So what prayer does is it says whatever you have predestinated for my life, I'm lining up and posturing my being in Eden. Let it be done what's established there for me. Let it be done down here. And that's why Jesus gets to a place when he's at the opiate or the pinnacle of his assignment. He wasn't walking on water giving sight to the blind. That was a part of him having authority and anointing and power. But what it was is he said, you know what? When I got ready to down the cross and shed the blood, because what was getting ready to happen was this. I had to create an opening in my body so that you can get back in. I got to get back to my nose. This ain't going well. What do you mean? What do you mean? He gets to Gethsemane, the place of the skull, the place of the press. And remember what he said? My flesh is weak. It doesn't want to do it, but my spirit is willing. But now he prays and he said, nevertheless, not what I will, but thy will be done. Remember when he's nailed on the cross, he says it is finished, which really in the Greek means assignment completed. I'm ready. Mission accomplished. What I was sent to do through obstacles, rejection, betrayal, misunderstood, being misconstrued by family and friends, being overlooked, talk to me, having a childhood that really wasn't ordinary but extraordinary. And I I was overwhelmed with adult problems at a child's age because I knew my assignment at age 12 and then I had to act like a kid with grown up responsibility. And my parents left me after paying taxes and started walking away and said, anybody seen Jesus? And I had to explain to them, no, you're not that I must be about my father's business, but I got to wait 18 more years. Hit your neighbor, say, wait on your ministry. Please give me some energy. Talk to me here. You just see, some of y'all know what you're supposed to do, but you're frustrated because it looks like you can't get to where you're supposed to be. Hit somebody, say it ain't time yet. So when, let me, I'm going to get back to these. No. So when Jesus, let me flow in the Holy Ghost. When Jesus says mission accomplished, it's done, it's over with. If y'all ever notice what happened while he's nailed to the cross, feet nailed, he's sitting there vulnerable and he's dying. They broke the legs of, of the thief. That was the thief of redemption and the thief of repentance and the thief, I should say, of rebellion and the thief of, 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 of repentance. They broke their legs because their their lower body was upholding their upper upper body but when they broke their legs their upper body collapsed on their lungs and it induced death but when they got to Jesus they couldn't do that because it was already prophesied in Psalms that they wouldn't break a bone on his body because no man take my life God help me help me Holy Ghost I lay it down but what happened was, what happened was, Sabbath was nigh. So, so, so all of a sudden, y'all know this old story that, 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 that a Roman soldier takes a spear. And he comes over to Jesus and notice that he's already dead. But what does he do? He speared him in the side. Well, where, where, where were we pulled out of? Yeah, where was Eve pulled out of? She was pulled out of the side of Adam, out of the first man, the dirt man, the red man. She was pulled out of his side. Yeah. So what was Jesus doing? He was getting back to a place when he said, it is finished. I need y'all to understand what's about to come out of me. When they opened me, out came blood and water. Yeah, why? What could wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. But how shall a young man cleanse his ways by taking heed thereto according to the word of the Lord? You've been cleaned by the washing of water by the word of the Lord. So what happened was out of his side came the word and came the blood that makes atonement for your sin. And it washed us so we can climb back in his side. Hit your neighbor, say, let's get back to Eden. Ooh, y'all ain't gonna tell. Yeah. See, blood and water will bring you in the right relationship with him at his side. And when you come through the blood and the water and climb in at his side, you're not hearing what I'm saying. You'll be like him in the earth. Go 
a little bit deeper. Give me a little, little bit here. Are y'all talking to me? It ain't that good that y'all quiet. You're hot. Can you? Black folk talk to me here. White folk, if y'all here, y'all can talk too. Hallelujah. Look at this thing now. We look deeper in this thing. That spiritual weapons of warfare. We activate Kratos dominion, which is the power to rule. I'm running behind. Y'all already seen it. You just didn't recognize it. Ephesians 6.10 said, be strong in the Lord and in the Kratos of his might. Verse 11 says, teaching us how to be strong in the Lord. Put on the whole armor of Yah. So Ephesians 1.12 says that third power, which is exousia, which we call authority or influence. So Ephesians 2.2 2 says, in times past, that's before we were saved, we walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the exousia of the air. But remember, he don't have recognized authority. He has power and he wants to use up authority. So he wants to creep up next to people who have authority and use them, especially if they don't know they have it. Yeah, can't nobody curse you but you. Man, I say, yeah, see, death and life don't, for your life don't lie in the power of my tongue, but death and life lie in the power of your tongue. You know, the Bible says this in Mark 11. It says, not that you'll have whatsoever your pastor say. He said, you'll have whatsoever you say. Why? You got dominion. You don't just have power and anointed you have an authority that a serpent wants to sliver up next to you and whisper in your ear and use your authoritative tongue to curse yourself I just, I'm tired of turning a four day journey in, 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 into 40 years not because of an enemy but an inner me I'm going to preach to myself. Yeah, I'm going to preach. I, I hope y'all get happy at some point. I just don't know when. But now the Bible says that this new birth, the, the, the devil influence, his, his influence, his influence has been brought to the life of the saint or the true believer. How? Colossians 1.14. My time is moving. He says, who Jesus Christ has delivered us from the existence of the power of darkness. Now the Lord expects each of us to operate in this authority. Say flow in it. Jesus ministered the word in authority. Luke 4.31. The apostles ministered the word in authority. 1 Thessalonians 1.5. Jesus has given us that same authority. He told us in Luke. 19 last night behold I give unto you power over all the powers of the enemy what kind of power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you so no weapon formed against you shall prosper not against you but a weapon within you will you'll never explode externalize destruction but he's banking on you imploding, internalized destruction. Now, I got to take some of y'all to church because y'all ain't going to push me here. I hate to do it because I'm sick of it. But hit a neighbor real fast. Real, come on, hit him. Say, say, your problem is with internal affairs. You are too influenced by what's on the outside of you. And instead of living from a seat of authority, sitting in heavenly places, we are walking by what we see and feel, and we're walking by the course of this life, rather than living up under eating, which is Eden, which is a place, a position of lining up our mind. That's why Paul said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God. Do what? Present, present your body. Die daily. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. That means you're going to feel all the pain. There was a preacher here recently. I'm going to take my time. Man, there was a preacher recently here in America that knew a Chinese pastor. And I don't know if you know it, but the Chinese saints have what they call underground churches. And many of them, we have hidden footage where they don't even have Bibles. And the awesome thing, they're crammed in a place like this, small, but they're crammed in, I mean, shoulder to shoulder. If y'all ever seen them get on trains, 
They literally, people get on trains and they literally smash like sardines and get in the, I would, I got claustrophobia. I ain't got fear, but I, I don't like being tight. Well, they cram in church like that. They don't have a Bible. Some of them have just little pieces of Bibles that were ripped off. They don't have praise leaders. It's one of the most awesome things you could ever witness that they start to worship and they all sing in concert. Ain't nobody shining and lifting up Jesus. And all I do is cry when I hear them because I feel their pain. But, but there's something about pain biblically. When you suffer for Christ, you reign with Christ. In this word in just a minute and this American pastor told this Chinese pastor brother he said I want you to know that I postured and positioned our members in our congregation that we're going to pray round the clock that he's given us a burden for you and we're going to pray for, for the Chinese saints that that persecution in China is lifted it is a tragedy and we're going to pray and we've been doing it round the clock everybody has a watch that we're looking for the most high to break through and lift the persecution up off of the saints in China. The Chinese pastor said, listen, oh no, please. He said, please do not pray that. In all due respect, he said, please do not pray that the persecution is lifted. He said, because I am afraid that if the persecution stops, we will become lukewarm like you American Christians. It is the persecution outside that makes us line up with who he said we are on the inside. It drives us to know him. Ain't gonna say yeah, yeah, that persecution is I find him in the fiery furnace. Yeah, if I suffer for him, I shall be rained. Paul said, I reckon the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall watch this be uncovered or revealed into us. I'm here to tell you this. You don't really know who you are and cannot tap into the depth of the essence of who he is in you without pain outside of you. It is that pain that has brought the best out of you. It is that agony that he shows up in. It is that place of pressure where prominence and prophecy meets the process and the progress comes from the process of the pain that you're going through because of the purpose by which you've been born again in the first place. He didn't just stumble up and save you. You were chosen in him before the foundation of the world. He didn't trick you into salvation. You didn't choose him. He chose you on purpose. That's why if you ever get discouraged don't stay on discouragement channel yeah too long watch the discovery channel but turn away from the discouragement channel don't stay on it too long how do you get out of it when you realize he wanted me other people picked me last other people picked over me other people walked out of my life but I need you to understand this he pulled you out of some stuff he wanted you on purpose you didn't choose him he wanted flow and all, I gotta have some mic. Flo And say he pulled me out. He pulled. Say this with me. I gotta get y'all to help. I'm not you. My church don't be quiet. Now. And I need y'all to help me. Help me. Say he wanted me. He Who don't want to be wanted? We live in a society now where they said that Facebook and Instagram too much. Facebook and Insta too much. Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. I don't know. Y'all got to see the new research on it. He didn't bring Zuckerberg before Congress for nothing. He brought him there to reveal to y'all what we got to understand. That Satan is the prince of the power of the air. And he's using everything to distract you so that you get from up under the spout of Eden. So that you start majoring and minor things and being trapped and ensnared with the cares of this world but they did a study on all of these Instagram and internet use and they said that there's dopamine 
caffeine, the same stuff that's in cocaine, and the same stuff that's in chocolate, it hits the brain the same way. That's why the first thing most people do when they wake up in the morning is not pray. They check their messages on their phone. The last thing people do before they go to sleep is they check their text messages. They check their DMs. You're not here. That's why you can't come to me. How much you had a dream. Hallelujah. Interpret this dream. Because if you didn't pray before you went to sleep, see, I don't know. See, you ain't got to be real deep. Go back to Sunday school prayers and say, now I lay me down to sleep. Father, I pray my soul to keep. If I die before I wake, I pray my soul to take. But go to sleep with a spiritual mind so that incubus and succubus and all kinds of unlawful, powerful entities can't just walk up in your life. Power to shout and speak in tongues and preach. But ain't got no power to get a devil off of you. We can't get cussing spirits off. We can't get lying spirits off. Folk got power but can't stay out the hotel room. People got power but can't stop fornicating. People got power but can't understand that like a dog we done went back to our own vomit. Y'all are not hearing what I'm saying. I don't want power in public. I want power in private. And he that seeth in secret shall reward me openly. Oh y'all ain't helping me in this place. Somebody shout get up under the anointing. The anointing ain't enough. It, it empowers you to get up under the eating, the opening, that authority, that, 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 that exousia. Are you here? God, I got a Herbie. I wish y'all, come on, hit a little bit just because we, we done got, we church tonight. Hit this, hit I don't care what you hit. Play, play, uh, 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 uh Yankee Doodle had a fall. Uh, <laughs> watch this, watch this. Let me get out of this. Can we go a little bit deeper? Too much, too much, too much. Can we go a little bit deeper? No, that wasn't enough for y'all. Can we go a little bit deeper? Yeah. Somebody say deeper. Look at Luke 9 chapter 1. No, Luke chapter 9 verse 1. Hurry up. Let me go. Woo! Father, help me here. Help me here. Hallelujah. Look at this. Then he called his 12 disciples together. I want y'all to notice something. A lot of times when we start seeing, we start seeing this kind of kingdom authority or Zeusia, we always see together. It seemed like kingdom authority and togetherness of his people run hand in hand. Because he's against lone rangers and solo narcissistic society that we in now. Look at me, selfie, selfish. Man, I can't buy it. Amen. Jesus Christ, I love you. But if you go follow me, you have to first deny yourself. Take up your cross, which is shame, and then you can follow me. And society has geared itself up to keep you trapped in you. Well, since you're in you, one of the greatest attributes that we could have is self-evaluation. In my prayer time over about you tonight, in my hotel room, I said, Father, he spoke back to I said, help me. What do I say? I was crying, looking at my own insufficiency. I don't know how to preach. I don't know what to say. Use me as a vessel. I don't want to approach them with intelligence. I need you to wear me like a glove. I need you like I hold the mic and speak through it in the system amplifier my voice. Let my voice be an echo, echo, echo of what I'm hearing coming from a third dimensional realm so that it unlocks your people in their spirit so that they know who they are. He said, I tell you what you do. He said, what you got to understand is 1 Corinthians 13, 5 said, let every man examine himself yes. Why? to see whether or not he be in the faith. Your faith needs self-examination you have to put yourself up under the microscope and do your own self y'all ain't saying nothing ladies we used to somebody else touching on us cough breathe in let me check this but spiritually can't nobody check the climate of your faith but you self-evaluation is tremendous I pray I prayed, Angie, in the hotel room. I said, Father, I said, I want heaven's perspective of S.C. Johnson. I'm looking at that clock, so I'm going to hurry. 
out of your culture. I, I need, I need you to give me a written evaluation of how you see me rather than how I'm trying to be portrayed before people. In other words, I need an integrity evaluation instead instead of a reputation evaluation. Because I've been positioning myself to be who I think folk want me to be. And I get confused because he said he wanted my eyes red and blue, so I bought them. And I put him in. He said he wanted me thin. So I starved myself and worked out. And I tried to be like the woman I caught him looking at on the magazine. But he still left me. And I seen him. I caught him out the corner of my eye. And, and, and this woman with blonde hair on the infomercial. He couldn't turn away from her. And then I saw I saw Beyonce put on blonde. And so I said that that's what he wants. So I went and put on blonde. And he still didn't leave the other woman. How many times are we going to be ensnared by how we feel other folks perceive us? Let me help y'all. I'm out the way. You'll never change how somebody perceives you. And if someone doesn't like you, there is nothing. Let me get to this word. There is nothing you can do to change because I can prove it. There are folk who don't even like you and don't even know what your middle name is. There are folk who choose to dislike you and they don't even know why and it doesn't even matter. And what should matter is what they think about you. We become paralyzed in the perspectives of how we think people view us. And we lose sight on the only thing that matters is what is heaven's record account of your life. God, what do you think? Y'all talk to me. What's, what's going on? What, what, what is the spirit realm saying about me? You can have a tremendous reputation in your community and not be recognized in the spirit realm. You can have power, but it's unauthorized. Paul, I know. He go, oh, shout out. I know. Man, man, me also. We got to get out of here. Watch this. Look at the Bible said. He go, go back, go back to, to Luke 9, 1. Let me establish what I was establishing there. And I'm just going to flow now. He called his 12 disciples together and he gave them. Come on, talk like you got it. He gave them power and conjunctive. So if they were the same, why add? He gave them power and authority over all what? He never cast devils out with power. He cast them out with authority. Power comes from an encounter. Authority comes from operating in the great commission, but also having a daily relationship with him. When you walk in with him, you're walking in authority. Getting ready to help you all now. Dominion of Kratos, man. Dominion of Kratos means king. I don't know if y'all ever read in Revelations 5, 9, it says he's made us kings and priests. Are you following me? Look at, look at Matthew 13, 11. Look like I'm doing bad. I'm going to quit. Y'all ain't, I'm, I'm begging y'all to talk back to me. Look at Matthew 13, 11. It says, and he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but not given unto them. He says the same thing in Luke 8.10, but the Luke 8.10 New, New Living Translation says, he replied, you are permitted to understand. What? The secrets of the kingdom of God. Say, this thing is a mystery. But I use parables to teach to others so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. That when they look, they won't really see. When they hear, they won't understand. Let me tell you who you are. He said, the thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I've come that you may have life, that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Look at the most powerful word in that text. It is they. What do you mean they? They separates. One word says two things. So what he says, he says, I've come that they may have life. What he's saying is if I say this, if I say, if I say, uh, they are my friends. 
Without me saying anything else, I just said y'all are not. So there are people in the earth that he said, I've come for them. God help me, Jesus. You can't stay on discouragement channel too long. You got to realize he came for you. You got to realize he wanted me. And now you got to get nosy and say, you know what? I would quit, but I'm on assignment and I can't quit until I say it is finished. Because he sent his word and it can't return to him void. What do you mean? I'm a carrier. I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant with a word, with an assignment. I might not know it all. I've been trying to find it in books. I don't went to conferences and I don't know. People have said other things. I've looked at other people's ministry and out of covenant I've tried to reposition myself to be like somebody who looked like they were getting kingdom results but you can never operate in your assignment trying to be somebody else y'all are sleeping bored with me here it's too exhausting it's too much work it's too frustrating trying to be somebody else have you ever seen a dress on a mannequin ladies and you bought it because it looked good on the mannequin but when you put it on it didn't look good on you that's me because it looked good on that person but it don't look good on you you have your own assignment he has an agenda in your life and you're carrying a word that's why some of you are who really saved that's got to really show enough Holy Ghost that is in the kingdom operating you've tried to quit but you can't quit you've tried to turn around you can't turn around you tried to get discouraged you tried to backslide y'all still ain't helping me here but he won't let you go you let him go he said where you're going see I don't understand why I hasten my word to perform it in other words I'm watching over what I said you know, I'm not just keeping you Peter I prayed for you not that you don't fail but I prayed that your faith fail you not how did you get faith Peter faith come back and hearing by the word I spoke a word in your spirit my word shall come to pass but you got to walk it out and get in position for you to know what I said to your spirit y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying everything else is coming to derail and distract it but if you can center yourself talk to me somebody you ever use GPS and you fool around while you're driving it's showing you the route it's telling you which way to go but you can mess with the screen and the screen will slow slide over and show you some other stuff and you my God you find yourself not being able to see the next turn you need to make but I declare unto you when you mess up and you can't see the direction serious still serious you might can't see which way to turn but it don't mean the voice stop you can't see the turn right but the voice in the direction said in a hundred feet turn right y'all ain't helping me here there's a button on the bottom of that app that says recenter because you start moving the screen trying to get back to find your location and you all over the place making it worse so they created a button that you can hit and it will recenter the screen high five somebody please come on and say recenter give me a little juice hit somebody say recenter your life recenter your life come on back to Jesus come on back to private time come on back and submit to the word come on and get up under Eden there's a place that you need to reign somebody say it look now how much time I got I, can I teach a little bit y'all that ain't enough man I'm asking I'm begging you could I teach David, what did you do to us, Adam? What did you do to us? You forfeited dominance. We had a place where we were like God. We were made in his own image and likeness. You know what, preacher? I'm going to preach to myself. We were set up and established that we can be like you. We can decree a thing and it shall be. We can speak and what was it becomes. In other words, we were like God that we could not not lie. Why can't God lie? There's too much dominion in his mouth that if he did lie by the time the lie came off his tongue, it would produce what he said. So it can no longer be a lie. It's impossible for him to lie. If he turned and said that these walls were black by the time 
time the C hit the K and the time that you can say he's lying, the white walls would turn black because he has creative ability in what he says. So when he made us, he made us to be able to say a thing and it is a stack. Come on, son. And it gets established. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying here? My job this week is to get y'all back to dominion. Get you back to talking. That's why our fellowship is called Kingdom Now. Dominion Network. The kingdom is here. And he's restored our dominion. You don't have to be depressed. Just change the channel. You ain't got to be down. Just change the channel. Somebody say, speak it. Oh, fellas, high five your neighbor, please. And tell them, say, speak it. Give me a little juice. I'm looking at the clock. My, my time is out here. Let me show you something. Give me, I mean, let's go in there and on here. Give, give me, give me a, a Psalm 8. Hurry up. Woo. Give me Psalm 8. Chapter. My God. Somebody just scream, please. This psalmist gets a revelation. He don't have a prophet. He just, he says, I'm observing something. Something's coming out of the, of the inner essence of who I am. I don't, I don't know, but he gets inspired. He says, oh Lord, oh Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Who has set thy glory above the heavens. Let's walk. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained strength because of thy enemy and thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. Come on. When I consider. Let me put this in somebody's spirit. Would you just reconsider tonight? Would you reevaluate things? When I consider the heavens and the work of thy fingers. The same finger that cast Satan out like lightning. The same finger of direction. He said, when I look at the fingers, the works of thy fingers, the moon, the stars, which thou has ordained. When I start looking around without the influence of others' voices, without prophecy or anybody coming and superimposing their perception on me. When I got away by myself, I tapped into a realm of something about you. He says, what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visiteth him? Answer your own question, psalmist. Verse 5, he says, he says, for thou hast made him a little lower. Answer your question, psalmist. What is it about man? I notice our area of dominion. It ain't under the depressive foot of an enemy. It's not from a place of stagnancy or confusion. He says, when, when, I, when I evaluate and reconsider, when I consider, he said, man, you made him a little lower. A little lower than what? Than the angels. And what have you done? You've crowned him with glory and honor. I don't know. I don't know but one type of an individual position that wears a crown. Y'all ain't talking to me here. I'm going to let the devil go on and run his mess and huff and puff and act tough and do all that stuff. I'm being fitted for my crown. I'm not talking about a crown in heaven. I'm talking about we shall reign in the earth. I'm talking about a mindset that gets me back up under Eden. Gets me back where the flow of heaven flows down through earth and flows through my Watch this now. Let me let me show you. Let me show you the power that. Let me show you the problem that we're dealing. Let me flow it out these notes. Give me Jeremiah three fifteen. Hallelujah. That clock messing me up, but I'm, I'm trying to hurry up. I, I'm gonna shoot a LeBron James buzzer beater. I'm almost done. Right. Mm. Watch this. Look on the screen, Jeremiah three fifteen. I'll give you pastors. 
I'm going to give you pastors. I'm going to give you pastors. Why? I'm going to give you a place where I'm going to send you mail. I'm a bad comic or something. This ain't the Apollo. Y'all got a booing spirit. I ain't up here performing. Unsaved folk intimidate me. Are you crazy? You know, unsaved folk will show up to your service. They ain't got no intent on being saved. They just going to mean mug. Why y'all laughing? We got such self-hate in our community that bros walk around. We mean mug each other. I'll kill you if you step on my shoes. You know what? You know what? We have a dominion crisis. You can't wear a crown if you don't know you're just a little lower than the angels. I'm closing. So since sheep have a tendency to wander, he said, I'll give you. Why am I giving you pastors? Because Adam forfeited your dominion. Talking to me. I don't need a pastor and I don't need prophets and apostles. That is a byproduct of them forfeiting dominion. When I established you, you were like me, but they lost it. So now I got to give you some shepherds. Please look at me. He says, I'll give you pastors according to my own heart, which shall feed you. Look, with knowledge. So I'm going to put somebody over you. And a pastor is a shepherd. But they can't be lazy, dumb dogs that don't bark. So the church is in a mess because of the shepherds that won't bark. They let everything, I got, I got a 110 pound Rottweiler. His name is Gideon. Y'all ain't talking to me. And he sits in the backyard and roams the backyard. And Gideon is so powerful. I know y'all think this is crazy, but I don't even have to lock some of the doors in my house. You know what? I don't even need a doorbell. You know why? Gideon wait. He don't wait till people ring the door or knock on the door. You know what Gideon does? We could be sitting in the house. He don't say nothing until somebody step on the property. Now as long as long as they walking on the sidewalk by my house he don't say a word. But if a car turns in my driveway now you're not hearing me. He's in the backyard. He doesn't have an ocular proof that somebody is on the property but he has his feet on the ground to where he's become in tune with his assignment that I'm assigned to this property. And any time somebody gets on this property, I have a lawful ability and responsibility to notify my owner. Ain't talking to me here. Yeah, he start barking. You know what I say? My, my, my family didn't get it the first couple of years. They didn't really catch it. But he only barks when he wants water, food, or somebody's on the property. He starts barking. I say, fat, somebody finna go off. Somebody getting ready to ring the bell. He, he, he fat thought I was being prophetic. He said, my God, dad, that thing work even, even when a doorbell. I said, no, son, that ain't the prophetic. Gideon is telling me us, but you're not in tune to the language so it just sounds like a bark to you but because I'm in tune with my animal I know what y'all ain't telling me see here's the problem we are citizens of a new kingdom so this kingdom has a language that's what shy that's why when we speak in tongues we're edifying ourselves so if I speak in tongues don't worry about what I'm saying I ain't talking to you my spirit is talking in his language he's talking in a kingdom language that is lining up and recentering my spirit because I get distracted God, y'all, I'm, I'm done. Y'all gonna get with me and I'm gonna be closing. Ah, so what's happening is this. Shepherds won't bark because it's hard to preach on sin when you're indulging in sin. It's hard to tell people to live holy. It's hard to tell people that you can't sit up in the church with your arm around your girlfriend. I'm gonna lose y'all now. I know 
know y'all caught up in Hebrew Israelites. You caught up in identity and think you're going to get into heaven because you got some pigmentation. The devil is a lie. You got to have the Holy Ghost or you ain't saved. Y'all are not talking to me here. You got to understand this. You can't sit up in church and sit up in life and just do what you want to do. But because people want to do what they want to do now, they don't want no shepherd. Or they only want a shepherd by convenience. They only want a shepherd for how they benefit. That's why they don't want to come up under authority. Because everybody wants to do their own thing. I'm going to show you all Y'all give me five more minutes. That the only way to operate in authority is to submit under authority. Some of y'all won't say amen to that. That's why we got renegade people now. Give me some a little bit power. They, they don't want to be a part of a ministry. They rather establish their own ministry. But I'm getting ready to show you in your Bibles. I'll give you a shepherd. I got five minutes. And please look, he's going to give you. Where's the knowledge coming from? A pastor who's a shepherd, but only the shepherds who are after his heart. Not the ones who went, but the ones who are sent. Now look again at Hosea 4 and 6. Jesus, watch this. I'm sorry, I'm getting out of y'all way. I'm getting ready to pray for you. He gave me instructions what to do for you tonight. Check on the screen, family. You've seen this, right? But now let's look at it. My people are destroyed for a lack of what? Why is there a lack if you under the shepherd? What's the purpose of a pastor? To give you or feed you knowledge and understanding. Why is his people? His people in perishing is an oxymoron. What is his people doing perishing? He said that they are void or they lack. There's a shortage of what? And he explains what he means. He says, because they have rejected knowledge. I'm going to do what I want to do. Never mind, Pastor. You still going to that church doing what they say? Ooh, wait a minute. Sound like sound like an upright. What did we tell you the serpent was? Shining. A shining light. So Satan is transformed as an angel of light and his ministers of righteousness. Y'all have gone to sleep on me. It sounds like Eden's challenge all over again. Ain't nothing new under the sun. So he eases up. Come on, y'all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to suck. You ain't got to put up. You've grown. Now, I'm not talking about these hypocrite pastors that's in the club with you. Remember, we're not talking about the wimp pastors. We talking about the hoo, hoo, hoo. Let me show you. you. You don't think we need word to make us consider and hit sinner? Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Show my people their transgression in the house of Jacob their sin. What's going to show you that you are a word? Let me. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, let me, let me, I'm gonna come back to this. Could I take a commercial? Could I take a commercial? Pull me back to this. What I hear? David gets off the GPS. And he sleeps with Bathsheba, has her husband killed. David commits adultery. Baby dies. But what David does is he's now in a position of authority and then he has power. But what David does is he becomes a lying, adulterous murderer who's after God's own heart. going after him but his actions are taking him far from him listen to me he's the king I'm law what's law is it written whatever I say is written as law 
I don't read law. What I say, they write it down. And what I say becomes law. You are forging the law of your destiny by what is coming out of your mouth. And laws are enforced by government authority. When you speak, angels line up, whether it's positive or negative. Talk to me, somebody. Command them, send them to come. Watch this. David, because he doesn't get judged right away, he gets relaxed. Tuesday, nothing. Wednesday, Thursday, did I get away with is, am I not going to be judged in my standing? I'm straight because I ain't heard your voice. Come on, dear. Uh, uh, you, you understand? You, you understand? And so, so, so what you talk about to realize is a year goes by and David's operating in authority and power and nobody checks. Uriah's dead. The baby in Bathsheba that was by adultery is a stillborn. David's sitting up, they dropping grapes in his mouth. Y'all don't say shit. Watch this. While David is chilling a year after thinking he's straight, he's off center. He can't see his error or see which way to go, but it don't stop the voice because the destination was already punched in. And Siri said, you might don't know where you at, but I'm going to tell you which way you need to go. I'm done. David is chilling, chilling because, see, you can't get out of rebellion without a word. I'm getting ready to get, I'm almost done. You can't get realigned without a There is nothing that was made that he didn't make. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was talk to me. He lines us up with a You go to church Wednesday and Sunday. Yeah, I, I, you don't understand the calling on my life. I have to constantly be recentered. You got to go to church all the time. See, you don't understand, but do you even remember what was preached? Do you remember what you ate last Tuesday? But your body processed it and you moved on. I don't remember what he preached last Wednesday, but my spirit processed it and I moved on. And my system rejected everything that wasn't sustenance and it pulled all the nutrients. So my spirit rejects all the mess and the people texting next to me and the people over here holding hands. And you go to that messed up church where well, you don't understand the people jacked up, but the word. Oh my God, I got to get out of here. Just help me a little bit, son. You all right? You can hear and play. Somebody say the word. Bishop, you're going to get the mic, man. I'm done. Watch. David is sitting up chilling in authority, in power, and he's all right. Watch this, Angie. I'm done. David's messed up, and he don't know it because he's still operating in his assignment. Preachers don't know he done lifted off of them because he don't take the anointing. He takes your authority. He don't take your gift. But I buy it, amen. What they going for? Because y'all been trying to figure out how do these jokers keep preaching and folk keep shouting and they sitting up, I told you, they pedophiles. They sitting up touching people's children. These preachers are crooked. Talk to me. They sitting up sleeping around doing everything the world is doing and you getting confused because you looking up and they still preaching with power. People still shouting and they're having church results. That's why, that's why folk know the preachers to flock to when they want to stay just enough saved to be miserable. Folk flock to preachers, shepherds who don't bark 
they just whoop. Whoop. When they see the devil, they just go whoop. So they go to these places where they know he can't cry with a word of correction because he or she is in the same predicament as you. And birds of a feather. Am I still in this Bible? Could, come on, y'all. If I'm, in, if I'm in here, say, whoop. I don't know why, but I just I thought it came to me. Watch this. Watch this. David's chilling. Because he can't correct himself. Somebody, somebody would agree, no, you can't. You, you can change your ways, take off the conversation of the formal method, put on, put on, hold on, my God. Listen to me. When you yield your members, you become slaves to whom you yield your members to obey. If you sow to the flesh, the Bible says, stand fast in the liberty wherein Christ have made you be, be not again entangled with the yoke of bondage. David didn't stand. He chose to fall. But he didn't lose authority or power. So what happens to David? He starts feeling the longer judgment is delayed, he figures it ain't going to happen. I'm done. What happens? David's chilling one day and all of a sudden they say, they say, oh, king, Nathan's here. Nathan's here. David gets up like a pro prophet. David was a mighty man, but he's destructive. Now, here's the thing. Nathan's a prophet, but he ain't a king. And when he came into the presence of the king, he still ran the risk of David having him killed. But Nathan, I believe, was saying, I would rather obey But let me tell you what also motivated him. I love David, and I know he's chosen by the Most High. And when all of y'all sitting around dropping grapes in his mouth, I'm getting ready to give him a word to straighten out his life. He comes in and goes through the story. David gets upset about the story. And then Nathan turned to him and shaking, but yet with the power of the Most High. He said, David, you're the man. David said, everybody get out of here. Come on, son, get, get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. What, what, give me my heart. Leave and give me my heart. And he sings Psalms 51. You can go through it yourself, but I'm going to give you this because my time is out. He starts saying stuff like, blot out my transgressions. Y'all know the famous one, create in me a new heart, renew, renew within me a right spirit of the Lord. But how about this? Restore unto me. The joy of thy salvation. In other words, I've been freed to tell you that I've been miserably saved. But if I didn't have this word, I wouldn't be able to share that with you. So that word unlocked me to be able to reposition my life to the place where I can come back before you and you put authority back in my life. Go to, go to Hebrews 13 and 17. One more scripture and I'm done. Hallelujah. Can y'all take this teaching? Hallelujah. Watch this. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Watch this. Watch this. Two scriptures. I'm done. What did I say? Give me this one. Give me this one. Give me this one. Hebrews 13 and, 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 and 17. You know it, but I got one last one after that, and then we're going to get here tomorrow. Have Sabbath service. Y'all all right? Watch this. Watch this. Hebrews 13, 17. I want you to put it on the screen. And y'all know it, but I want you to read it out loud. One more time out loud. Ready? Read. Hold it. Hold it. Y'all read that like y'all all right with that scripture. You just read it like you all right. Read it again. submission submerge thing is your benefit. All right, time is out. I ain't got to teach that, but I'm going to show you one last thing. You, somebody can find it in the scriptures. I can't think of it right now. You know it, but you'll find it. Watch this. A man comes to Jesus 
And he says, see, he's an he's a, he's a official, he's an officer, a centurion, Roman army. The enemy of Jesus. <laughs> and he finds Jesus and he says this. Let me hear it. He says, he says, he says, he says, uh, Master, I need something from you. Y'all know it. Matthew 8. He says, verse 5. He says, he says, I got a, I got a servant. He's at home and he's, he's, he's messed up. He said, and Jesus said, you know what? I'll tell you what you do. Take me to him and I'll lay my hands on him. I'll physically put my hands on him. Aaron, I'm, 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 I'll put my hands on him. Power. I'll, I'll put my hands on him. Power. The centurion said, listen, and I'm closing now. He said, listen. He said, no, 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 no. No disrespect. He said, I don't need you to come to him. He said, he said, this is what I need you to do. He said, I, I, something is in my mind. I, he said, let me tell you what I sense. He, he says, I, I'm a man of authority. I tell men to go and they go. In essence, what he's saying is this. I have men under my authority, but I submit to higher authority. So I understand principles of submission. So what I'm saying is, you don't physically need to go see him. We can make a, You don't need to physically go see him. What you need to do is just send the word. I'm getting ready to leave you. In other words, you ain't got to come. I know that if you can just speak the word in the atmosphere, you don't have to be where he is. Could y'all wave or something here? In other words, what I realize is, is his problem is manifesting in the natural, but it's coming from a source that is in the spirit. And I recognize authority. So now I understand this. If you speak it in the atmosphere and direct it, watch this. He ain't say speak it east, speak it west, speak it toward. See, I live over here. Speak it in that generation, that, 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 that general vicinity. Uh uh, he said, listen, if you speak it, I'll direct it. Oh, y'all are hear me. In other words, if you just put the word out there, I'll receive the word and make sure it lines up with the individual that I need you to deliver. Somebody shout, just give me a word. See, if you give me a word I'll know what to do with it don't nobody need a word when you got a word I don't need somebody to tell me what to do when I know what to do I need a word when I don't know what I am to do so what I'm saying is this I don't need him to be an ordinary God so he refuses to stoop down to my level I need him to be extraordinary so he said if you want me to be extraordinary I need you to come up here. Give me power. I need you to come up here with Christ in it. I need you to line up your mind. I need you to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Come on in a sin to a place of dominion. Y'all don't understand. It ain't just shouting power. It ain't just preaching power. It ain't just church power. Y'all got authority but authority ain't authority until you exercise it. It's time to go back to our houses and open up our mouths and declare from a seat of authority and tell everything to line up y'all ain't helping me with the will of my father father line up I decree and declare some of y'all gotta understand you have an authority like Samuel that whatever you say he won't allow your words to fall to the ground I'm tired of seeing what I'm seeing and God said no you're not because if you were tired you would begin to change your mind you would begin to let your mind line up with mine so you see what I see let me tell you all why blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see what God is doing the enemy wants to pollute our hearts he wants them contaminated why he wants us shallow in our vision the bible said who shall ascend into God's holy mountain he that has clean hands and a pure heart what is a mountain it's a high point to 
to look over the horizon uh, to see bigger places uh, to see bigger things uh, to know where you are uh, somebody say hey uh, tell your neighbor uh, come on somebody uh, tell them say neighbor uh, I'm getting ready uh, to get out of this mountain uh, I'm getting ready uh, to get out of this valley uh, I'm getting ready uh, to stop climbing uh, and sliding uh, I'm getting ready to speak to my mountain and tell my mountain you got to move y'all ain't helping me the devil ain't running but we resisted but if you submit to God and resist the devil he's got to leave you I ain't got nobody here somebody say hey it's your neighbor hit him but don't hurt him I said hit him but don't hurt him tell your neighbor something shifted in my spirit give me volume something clicked tonight I'll never go back to being who I was I appreciate the anointing I appreciate power but now I'm walking in my authority I ain't got to boast I ain't got to stick my chest out I ain't got to show up when I walk with him, his presence turns up the heat. His presence makes devils acknowledge. Y'all ain't talking to me. It's time to get past the struggles that you've been with all these years. You preach harder, still struggling. We prayed longer, still struggling. God said, your problem, it ain't with power it ain't with anointed you don't know the authority you don't know what I've restored I brought the keys back I gave them to you this is a good place to run the three people and tell them my life has changed tonight tell three people my life has changed my life has changed come on Yes. I got to leave you. My time is done now. Let me see what time it is. Lord have mercy. I got to sit on down. Oh, yes. Let me tell y'all this. Y'all remember when a man came to Jesus? He said, My son is grievously vexed with the devil. The disciples, they tried to cast out the devil. Y'all ain't helping me. Y'all ain't helping me. He gave them power, even though they didn't have the Holy Ghost. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He gave them power, but he hadn't died. He hasn't rose. He ain't sent the Holy Ghost. But there's power in what he say. And as long as you do what he say, you'll see his results. But there came a time that his disciples, they tried. Tell your neighbor, say, they tried. Come on, say, they tried. I've been trying with the word and no results. I've been trying. Come on, somebody. The vine. Said, they came back to Jesus. They said, Master, we were unable to cast out the devil. Why? Other devils came out in your name. I've had successes, but this one obstacle I can't get around. This one issue, y'all ain't talking to me. In other villages, I cast out devils. Could y'all wave or something? But wait a minute. Why? Do I not get results when I've got them in the past? Why were we unable to cast out the devil? Jesus said, you had little faith. But he said, wait a minute. I don't want you to get discouraged. Let me explain something to you. These kind 
these kind. Tell your neighbor, say, this stuff here, this what you're going through here, this give up spirit, this give up giant, this backslide giant, this kill yourself giant, nobody loves me giant, church is fake, God ain't real, no progress giant. Tell somebody, please, tell them, say, this giant. Hey, I've been able. I'm da 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 bo bo sha. He said that be your sha. I ain't talking to y'all that's here. So whatever he say, what is he saying? He said, no, watch now. Y'all don't have faith. He said, but that ain't really the issue. These I don't want you to give up on ministry because you had a failure. I'm getting ready to show you. You are not a failure because you failed. Real failure is to fail to come back and hear me and let me realign you and tell you what to do to get past this mountain. Y'all don't get it twisted. I'll let you run into stuff that's bigger than you. So you got to come back to me so I can tell you how to get around on this he said these kind they these kind they don't come out but by fasting and praying now listen to me carefully you don't fast and pray to get power you didn't hear what I said fasting and praying don't give you power that would suggest that the Holy Ghost is a thermostat and you decide the temperature in the room you don't turn him up and turn him down y'all ain't talking to me you don't fast for power you don't fast you don't pray for power but you pray to line up your mind and you fast to tell your flesh down boy you ain't hearing me fasting and praying realigns your relationship so you're closer to your father because you're crucifying your flesh so what he was saying was these guys they ain't coming out unless you have my authority and you ain't gonna have my authority unless I'm standing with you standing beside you standing in you and as long as you're doing it I can't do it as long as your hands on it I can't fix it as long as you're trying to figure it out is disputing and fighting with the devil over Moses' body. Power meant what? Michael stepped aside and said, the Lord will do it. Now listen what the most high said. This is the last thing I'm saying. It may say. I was put to spiritual shame after 30 years of preaching. I've been having success, but this can't seem to get past. What's wrong with you? You're trying to use power in a situation that only authority works. Move it now. Let's dance hard. Let's go. And nothing's moving. God said, I'm going to give you sweat liquidity. And he said to this to me, can I do two minutes? Watch this. This messed me up. The Bible said, ask and you shall receive. Knock and it shall be open. Seek and you shall find. Now this messed me up. Jesus said, everyone. Y'all get ready to explode me because I'm done. We're going to dance off this tonight. Watch this. He said, everyone that asketh. Now wait a minute. I don't preach that for you. Thank you for watching. YouTubers, please subscribe, click the notification bell, like and share. If you're watching us on Facebook Live, simply join the Dominion Center page by clicking like, then like the video, comment, and share the video. Thank you.